I have to say, man, that little fight scene with the two people with um, Raju on top of <laughs> the top of beam with the guns. Amazing. 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 I've not seen that might be new levels of insanity. Yeah, yeah. I've not seen of all the action movies I've seen, I've never seen anything like that. And I've seen a lot of action movies. It's just unique, man. And it was so ridiculous at times. Like the guys like they're doing like, you know, they're doing flips and stuff like that and they're landing perfectly. Like Beam has a dude on his shoulders and he's just like landing. Raju was able to fire guns off while mid-air that hit perfectly. The level of ridiculous. He is, so crazy. He is born to shoot that guy from a young age, Raju, but it, it was insane. But again, another insanely creative like action sequence, right? Like it's just, that's not how I would have thought that that scene would go. I thought they would just beat up a few people and blow it all up and run away. But no, it had to yeah. be being carrying Raju on his shoulder and running away. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it was crazy. It was sheer craziness, but such a ride to watch. Like, I, I was smiling, yeah. I think, while watching that sequence. Hello, and welcome to another episode of D54. I think it's episode 14 or 15. I'm losing count now, but it's definitely the most explosive episode that you're going to hear because <laughs> we are reviewing RRR. I am Amit, and I'm joined by Sunny. Hey, everyone. Good to be here. Looking forward to this one. Yeah, man, Sunny. So, whew, quite quite a ride we just went on with this one. <laughs> so, you know, knowing I've known you for quite a while, man, and we've we've talked about all kinds of things. But one thing we do share is we love, you know, throwback wrestling. Not so much of today's <laughs> age, but, you know, back in the day, you know, with the wrestlers out Attitude there. Attitude era. W- yeah. Attitude era, exactly. Um, I don't know. I wanted to ask you a question, man. Would this, uh, would RRR be more like a Royal Rumble or would it be more like a Hell in the Cell? I think it depends on what part of the film you're talking about. Like, mostly mm. it's a Royal Rumble because there are so many people <laughs> at any given time. Actually, it is almost entirely a Royal Rumble, especially the yeah. earlier scenes, except it's not 30 people, it's like a thousand. <laughs> oh my god a thousand people Royal Rumble that's exactly how this movie felt like man um, I just thought like hell in the cell because it's so intense like that's true Royal Rumble sometimes you know someone runs in and they get, they get thrown out straight away or something like that but hell in the cell is just like in your face non-stop and I don't know how it's else better to describe I don't know how else better to describe this movie man because poor oh boy you know no holding back. It, it was one hell of a one hell of a ride, man. It was one hell of a ride. This is yeah, yeah hell in the cell is appropriate for the brutality and just the intensity of it. Yeah, man. But so a little bit of I don't normally go into too much stuff about the movie beforehand, but I think for this one, being an international film, I'm not sure who's listening. I'm not sure how much people know about sort of South Indian cinema. Um, so it's, it's a movie which is of from South India, but it sort of spans across all of India because they have stars from, you know, predominantly South India. The two main stars are from South India, um, specifically um, from the Telugu language. That's sort of the directors of Telugu, um, you know, in Andhra Pradesh somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. But there is some Bollywood influences as well. I don't mean the dancing or the music. I mean the actual actors. Uh, there's a couple, uh, Ajay Devgan, who's really popular, actually pretty old actor, uh, the guy that plays the dad of Raju. Um, and then um, Raju's wife, um, Alia Bhatt, who's also uh, pretty big in Bollywood, more popular in like, you know, the modern, you know, youngster age and stuff like that. So it, it is a movie that spans across India, which is kind of different because India is, you know, so different and that we have South Indian cinema you know, Bollywood, we have like stuff from regional places. Each state has its own industry, basically. But wow. so, what do you know much about Indian cinema or what's your experience been? Actually, I don't know much about Indian cinema at all, actually. I didn't realize there was anything beyond Bollywood until I looked into this mm. film a little bit. So I'm very new to it all. I feel like the last movie I saw was like Lagan, and I don't even yeah. know when that was. And that was like a fairly 
a film probably made for Western audiences as well, mm. rather than maybe something that was made for a domestic audience in India. So look, I'm entirely new to it. And so my entire take on this stuff is almost as someone seeing it for the first time. Yeah, right. Right. Well, that's a great perspective. I think I've I've seen quite a bit just because my, 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 my wife is South Indian. So I grew up watching, you know, Bollywood stuff. And then after that, I basically moved on to South Indian stuff, which I've enjoyed, honestly, thoroughly much more. Um, but so director SS Rajmouli, I want to talk a little bit about this guy. Huge, <clears throat> huge reputation. I'm talking like, poof, I don't know, maybe like a James Cameron level. Uh, you know, director or producer. I think he's director and producer in this. So, you know, really, really high, rep, really huge, huge reputation, renowned. He's done, I think, the last movie. Or may, I don't know if it's the last one, but he did a movie called Bahu Bali, which has two parts, which basically sh- rocked Indian cinema like crazy. Like this one, Kuro did, probably at a bigger scale. I mean, I, I'm telling you, man, like there were people here in Melbourne, Australia, like I knew that were like dressing up with t-shirts with like the Bahu wow. Bali prints and stuff like that and watching the premiere of the second part. Jesus. Yeah. So it's quite yeah. a phenomenon. Like he's a superstar oh, yeah. over there. No, okay. he's, he's, he's huge. He's huge. And one movie that I saw of his, and I want to, I want to tell you a little about this and get your take on this mm. is he did a movie called, I just pronounced, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's either Iga, I think, but it translates to, it's trans, it translates to fly. Right. And when I say that, I'm not talking about a movie like the James Goldblum, a man turning into a fly. This yeah, movie, yeah, I'll read you the quick synopsis, the quick um, yeah, tagline. Yeah, yeah. A murdered man is reincarnated, is reincarnated as a house fly and seeks to avenge his death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a film. That <laughs> is... I imagine people yeah. are dressed up as flies for the premiere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so he's known to do stuff that's out there. Um, okay. pretty creative, pretty creative director, and he has, at least from what I can see, probably changed the industry. So there's huge expectations around this movie in wow. India, which you know, watching it probably from afar, we probably don't know about. It has its pros and cons, I think, because mm. I think in India, if you watch this as a big fan of his, you might come in with expectations of stuff, which this might not meet, considering his previous movies, especially Bahubali, was very story driven. Um, you know, mm. it had a great, it was like an epic, it was like a tale, you know, it was like a- Was that like also a heavy action focus as well? Like It was, this? it was, okay. it was a bit different. It was more like war kind of action. Mm. Okay. But it was definitely more of like a saga. It felt like more like Lord of the Rings, whereas right, yeah, this okay. one doesn't feel the same. But man, let's, mm. let's, let's, let's get into this. Um, I want to get your take, Sunny, on, we, the only way I think you can go about this, because there's no point on, you know, thinking about, how deep and meaningful this movie is or the broader yep. themes that this brings about. Let's just get straight into it, man. Like, just break it down. Scene. Yeah. Not, not literally scene by scene. scene, by scene. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Four hours later. Not, <laughs> not, not scene by scene, but I've just highlighted some of, you know, the most impactful yeah. scenes to carry the story through, man. So this movie starts off with Raju and Beam. Well, not starts off, but like the first impactful scene, which drew my eyes, which got me to, you know, get up out of the seat. Raju, his element is fire. I wasn't quite sure what the whole thing was about, but he's a fiery person. He starts the movie off, no dialogue, running into a crowd of, what, a thousand, two thousand? That's I thought, the Royal Rumble part, man. Yeah, man. But what do you think, man, of both his intro and then Beams, who <laughs> elements water, fights a freaking tiger, like... <laughs> and running away from a wolf. He is yep, yeah, man. Standard, standard behavior. Um, yeah, I thought Raju's opening entrance was just mind-blowing, to be honest. Like, he was just standing there stoically. He gets an order from his British, like, police boss person, and just jumps over the fence and fights like a thousand people to get to the guy he's meant to arrest. I could not believe what I was seeing, to be honest. Like, is he seriously doing this? Is this what this movie is doing? That they're going to somehow make it the case, believably, that he is beating up a thousand people to catch this one guy in the crowd. And it did it. And it was completely compelling. Like, yeah. the guy is, you know, expertly using his baton to, like, 
mm. you know, viciously beat up everyone. They're piling on him, like, all these bodies, and he's, like, throwing them off. And, like, it, it was incredible, man. Like, it genuinely blew my mind. And I was yeah. watching this with my wife, and she was just like, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> and I was actually just, like, blown away by it. By it. Once you get over, like, this little bit of the ridiculousness of it and just give yourself to this film... I think there are a lot of scenes like this where you're just like jaw dropped as yeah. to what is going on. And like that, that is perhaps the peak of those scenes because oh. it's unbelievable. Yeah. But it's, it just immediately captures your attention. And then the yeah, entrance for Beam as well. I didn't really understand what he was doing with the chasing of the wolf and mm. the tiger at the start. <laughs> it became clear later about. That was also amazingly done. Like the you know lion and the wolf are moving like with such like speed, and it felt real even though you knew it was CGI. It's just yeah. brilliantly done, I thought. And like the intensity of these fight scenes, <laughs> like they could be done in a corny way, but somehow they just felt really authentic, and they were just done with a straight face. And I think that like elevated this film so much. But like immediately captivating, man. Like draws you into that story. If for no other reason, then I can't believe what I'm seeing. I need to keep watching. Yeah, man, for sure. No, you exactly the same feeling. Like this is like what minute fifteen or minute ten. Like, yeah, and this is what we're seeing. Like for a movie that's like three hours something, this is how this movie starts. Like, how are they going to top this? <laughs> yeah, like, but man, they don't even they don't even have to try. It feels like to top this because they do it so easily. But my God, man, the way I love the way that they shot these scenes, you know, like they had these, like, I still remember quite a few of them. Like, I think there's a scene where like Raju is like stuck between like all these guys and they're covered over him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he pinches like, like someone's ear. Him. They pinch yeah. someone's ear and he turns to the Hulk and just like blasts them all away. He's jumping like at ridiculous heights. Um, you know, the <laughs> other scene, like, like, I think it's beam. He's like, he's captured the tiger, but then, you know, the um, trap breaks and he's holding it down by himself. He's holding the weight of a tiger. <laughs> that is out of control. Yeah. Like it, it was, it's, it's that like realism versus them almost having superhuman strength, like pretty yeah, yeah. well. Like, they are for all intents and purposes, superhuman. Stop. Because yeah, no man. one else can do, do what they're doing, but it's yeah. kind of grounded in reality or tries to be. Yeah. Yeah, no, it did. It sets up because I did honestly. I'll be, I'll be transparent. I watched this a few times. I'm not gonna like, like I watched this only once. It was too good for me to just watch it once. I was so blown away. <laughs> um, but essentially, it does set up a few things. Like it showed, like Beam is more about sort of strength, um, and like you know, just grit. Whereas Raju is a bit more strategic. Like he has to like you know get through a whole bunch of people and use some different tactics yeah. to get through it. So intense in different ways. <laughs> But yeah, yes. man, this was, man, if a movie starts like this, like, you know, I, I, I definitely felt the same way your wife did when that came out, man. It was like, holy crap, this is what we're going to get into? Is this what this movie is about? All right, buckle in. Like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so after that, there's a, you know, there's a few things that happen. We get to know the characters a bit. You know, a bit of, sh- a bit of, sh- a bit of strategy goes on. I will say, touch on a little bit now, the story, while... I would put it like this, what I really liked about this, the story was engaging enough, I'd say, you know, um, you know, I will talk about it a little bit more as we go on, but even the setup, it was, it was, it, it didn't, it didn't take away, this movie is not about the story, I think, you know, it, there is some parts about revolution, Indian revolution movies have been done so many times in so many different ways, so this is not a new one, it's a big part of India's history, so, you know, mm. Bollywood and all Indian cinema have different takes on it. But it wasn't the main sort of thing. So I thought it was engaging enough to keep me interested. But because the action was so great, I didn't really feel like I needed to get that interested. What, what you know, from the start, what did you think about the story just at the start part? Yeah, I, to be honest, I think there were elements of it that I found shocking, like, you know, the British mm. governor person stealing the daughter and all of that. It yeah, yeah. does a, a decent job of, like, making you emotionally invested or just feeling angry about it. But as a whole, I think the plot, you're absolutely right. It's almost secondary to the action sequences that kind of it gives rise to, I think. And so, yeah, I agree that it probably didn't do a whole lot, particularly in the first half plot-wise. 
and it was really being carried from one massive set sequence to another massive set, set sequence. And then everything in between was kind of gap filling to get you there. And it did enough to keep you interested and be like, oh, what's happening here? Um, but it, it didn't do too much more than that. So I agree with you in that regard. Yeah, definitely. I think the setup was pretty okay. You know, there was a bit of like, um, they set up, you know, a bit of romance here and there a little bit, which was okay. It was kind of nice. You know, it wasn't yeah. too exaggerated. I know how you feel about romance from our Top Gun episode, Sonny. So, uh, I mean, no, no, no. I would- <laughs> this is all right. This is all right, to be honest. Like, yeah. yeah. No, no, I I didn't mind this too much. It was pretty low key. It wasn't too in your face. Uh, yeah. But man, after we talked about these two guys, these guys' introductions, the only way they could meet each other is something absolutely crazy. Like, what's the point? If, they, if they're going to intro us like this, you think they're going if, to, if they intro themselves, finding a tiger and getting to a mob of like a thousand people, you think they're just going to meet on the street and shake hands? No way, man. No chance. No. They are going to freaking save a child from a burning train by coordinating <laughs> using, visually using, using sign language <laughs> basically from across the how do you even see each other from so far and communicate so well Such great side and yes. just they just understood each other knew each other and man what do you think about that bridge scene because that scene to me was just like another wow moment i was like holy crap I genuinely didn't understand what was going on for part of that thing. I was just watching it being like, what are they doing right now? And their plan to rescue this kid was unclear, right? The entire time, even though they appeared to know what they were doing. One dude's on a horse, another dude on a motorbike, (laughs) falling off the bridge. It it was pretty insane, but it it was beautifully done and that, kind of iconic i guess it's iconic the scene where they're kind of holding one another's hand as they've saved the kid was it, it's pretty it's brilliantly done but again i think it goes to show like while like some of these action sequences or you might look at it and say oh this is unbelievable or a bit corny mm. i think these action sequences are so creative right yeah. like you don't know what's going on they're not formulaic in any way you genuinely don't know how the yep. action is going to play out. And that's part of the excitement of this. Yeah, like that's... you didn't know until they actually did it, what they were planning. It wasn't like they were just going to punch some guys or something. Yeah, um, man, that's it was such genuinely a good point. incredibly creative. And I thought that was, that is a theme that goes through all of these sequences, the action sequences, like they're all creative within their own like yeah. space. You put up um, such a good, but, such, put up such a good point. Cause like I've seen, South Indian movies, as I said, and this action in South Indian movies is not uncommon. It's actually very common. You see so many movies about, you know, like the guy from like the village taking over like the big corporate empire or, you know, Mm. fighting for justice or something like that. You see it all the time, but the action is most of the time so predictable. Uh, Yeah. So much slow motion um, over, you know, over exaggeration like this movie does, but not in a creative way like these guys did. Yes. Yes. You're right. You, you saw, it's such a good point because like when you're saying that, like, when you said like, you know, they themselves don't know what they're doing. We, we don't know either. Like no, what are these, yeah, like, yeah. no one can, you know, it's in sense that this guy from, you know, I think it's Raju gives the Wakanda forever sign. And then <laughs> basically they're off, man. the guy gets on the bike, they get the flag. He covers it in water. They save the dumbass kid. And then. <laughs> <laughs> and the immediate best friends. It's kind of like how you and I met. Oh, I mean, yeah, basically the same thing, right? like, like, you know, I'm pretty sure situation. I was on the horse, you on the bike. <laughs> you say random kid on the train or something. Yeah, just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was um so creative. I did like, so I did see a little bit, because this is obviously, you know, a very CGI heavy movie. But it definitely <clears throat> takes a different take on it. You know, CGI has become like the enemy of movie making world, I think, thanks to Marvel in some, to some people at least. <laughs> but I liked it because I think they do, CGI in sort of a creative way. I saw some short videos about how they did it. It is a lot of, um, you know, they use a lot of physical things in the CGI. So I think they did build some mechanism for some, you know, train-like thing to fall, like made of, you know, foam or something like that to, you know, emulate the sort of situation. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously a lot of wire work from these guys and, you know, they, they were put to the test uh, a lot throughout the whole thing. Um, yeah. So, you know, the CGI, I didn't mind it too much. There were, like, some parts, like the animals and stuff, didn't look like animals, you know. They did look like yeah. CGI animals. 
Yes, um, I think what, that, what that occasionally took me out of the film. Like even mm. when Raju is beating up the 1,000 people, it's clear yeah. that like there aren't 1,000 people there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's a few sequences later on that feel that way. But actually, like I think you get used to it pretty yeah. quickly, I think, and it stops taking you out of the film. And I think just the sheer ambitiousness of it, you give it mm. a pass for it because it's doing things that are just spectacular, right? And you can't Agreed. recreate it in any physical way, like practically. So yep, yep, like, yep. I think if you just sit back and enjoy it, then you will really enjoy it. And like that, that CGI yeah. stuff will mean less to you, I think. Yeah, I, th- I think it got better as it progressed. Um, again, yeah. like, animal CGI is tough. I can't remember too many movies that do it all that well, you know? Like, yeah, you know, good I think point. Like, I think I was like Life of Pi and the Tiger. That's done pretty well, but uh-huh, it's static, yeah, right? True. It's not. Yes. It's not as dynamic as what these guys are trying to do. Um, That's right. So it's not. It's not an easy feat to accomplish. So they were ambitious in what they, you know, what they tried to do here. And yeah, I definitely gave them a pass for that because it was not. It wasn't cartoonish. I guess if it was cartoonish, I would have felt like this is a bit silly and this is taking me out of it. I think it was just good enough. Or probably more than just. It was, it was good enough for me to be like, all right. It's okay. I can dig this because yeah. everything else around it was so cool. <laughs> you know, hundred percent. Yeah, man. and it was done with such like yeah. conviction. I thought like it wasn't. It didn't feel lazy or anything. It served like a broader yeah. purpose to show you the epicness of it. And I thought that yeah, was yeah. like I bought into that. Yeah, yeah, no, no, same man. Think on this on the same boat. So now these guys are you know best friends. After doing this, we get a nice little immediately. We get a nice little song montage. Um, you know, I'll talk. I don't want to talk about that song one time is okay, but there's one that I want to talk about now, which is probably, yeah, one that, again, if the action doesn't blow your mind away, this dance sequence oh, blew yeah. me away, man. So the song, when they, I guess it's when he gets invited to the party, you know, they still continue the, the storyline of, dancing. yeah, 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 the story of being falling in love with, um, her name is Jennifer, I've got it up here. Um, yeah. You know, invited to the party, Basically, and then, yep, we get a little bit of, you know, the good old insult of the, you know, peasants down there, you, you know, being called brown faces and all that. Um, yep. Don't know how to so, dance. Don't know how to dance, yep. uncultured, you know, the guy trips him up, all this stuff. But that leads to, honestly, one of the most, because again, I've seen this dance stuff. One of, to me, this is one of the most unique dance sequences I've ever seen. <laughs> In any ah, film. Okay. But what, yep. but what was your take, man? Because you're not so familiar with sort of music and nah. dance in movies. So what was your take? I mean, controversially, or maybe not controversially, I might say that this could be my favourite scene in the entire film. Mm. I yeah, liked no, it not, that man. much. I liked it that much because, firstly, I didn't see it coming. Like, maybe I should have, but it was so well done. Secondly, the dance told a story or, like, it was, again, another mechanism to show kind of the British fighting against kind of the, the revolutionaries, I guess. And it was another way to showcase that conflict without them fighting one another in a physical sense. And then secondly, I just thought the dance sequences on this were amazing. Like, yeah. first of all, I'm blown away by these two actors who, you know, not only are they massive tanks and would have done amazing feats of human, like, prowess to be in this film, they are great actors and then they can dance amazingly oh. well as well. Like, how many Hollywood action stars do you know that can do that? Like, maybe we don't see it enough, but I can't tell you. Can Vin Diesel dance like this? I think I've not. Have you not seen, have you not seen John Travolta in Pulp Fiction? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point. Only he could compare. Only he could compare. Uh, but I was just so blown away by this dance sequence. I thought it was fun, so full of energy, um, brilliant colours, told a really, like, cute story as well in terms of the romance between Beam and Jennifer um, and was just, yeah, done so well. And one of the other things I appreciated was I felt like the film gave time to appreciate the dance. Like, it it was a fairly long dance sequence, right? And they spent time, like, legitimately focusing on Beam and Raju as they danced and then went to the British as they did their little dance thing. And you can see one another in the background, them watching one another dance as well. Yeah. So it felt like a massive production, right? Like Definitely. it wasn't just someone dances for two seconds, it cuts away to someone's reaction and then the next dance step. It was like, no, here's these two guys dancing for a while. British people are watching and the Brits dance and everyone else is watching. 
So I just thought like the whole filmography of that was so well done and really so well showcased brilliantly the, the dancing and the talent of all yeah, of these cast members. And it was just a catchy song. So <sighs> like you can't, you can't complain in any respect with this. No, man. I think you brought up a good point about advancing the romance. It also advanced the sort of, you know, their sort of friendship and all that stuff as well. I felt, you know, True, the, yes. the chemistry. Yeah. And yeah, man, you talk about these actors. I was, you know, I was going to bring this up sometime, but these guys are freaking incredible. Like the one, the chemistry between them was so, so freaking good. I've, it's one of the, you know, best duos I've seen in a very long yes. time. I can't remember, um, you know, too many actors being this much aligned and that dancing summarizes it so well. Cause I watched that scene so many times now and I watch it and I watch them dance. They're in sync, like not a step off, like, and they're complicated moves. They're moving, it's moving it so fast, so fast. And just the moves are all synchronized. It was like so impressive. I was so blown away. No, honestly, if you say that's your favorite part of the movie, I would not, there's nothing controversial about that at all. Cause it was so amazing. Um, yeah, the song was awesome. It was um, definitely great. One thing I have to say, though, is I've seen normally dance is like performative. It's like, you know, we've seen so many dance offs in like, you know, dance movies for Hollywood and stuff like that. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they're normally like competitive in some way. I've never seen any dance in any movie be a test of endurance, which this one. <laughs> yeah, <good point. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like a dance to the death. <laughs> you can stand up the longest they keep dancing. Stand up the long- yeah. Oh man. It was, it's uh, just a powerful scene. Um, I think yes. when you brought it up that, you know, it continues the story along, you know, the first song was, is nice. Like it's also a good song, but it was more just a montage of friendship, you know, which is, which is, which is, which is, which is okay, you know, no, I'm kidding. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was okay. Cause you know, but South Indian movies, they use songs in a whole different variety of ways. Sometimes yeah, they... I was going to comment on yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. No, they use it to like sometimes just showcase, you know, a specific dancing, but don't carry the movie story. Don't carry the movie forward sometimes. Um, sometimes mm. it's more about just like, you know, they'll go somewhere to another country and just sort of show it off in that way to just make it a big yes. scene. Like that itself is like a big thing in itself. But this one did everything in one shot, I felt. Advanced the story. Yeah. Catchy as hell. And... um you know, showed a lot of things in it, but yeah, man. It and was, just like joyful as well, right? Like you're watching it with yeah. a bit of a smile on your face, right? And like, that's, yeah, that's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Cause it was like, I think the energy that they, these two actors had was so, I don't know, it's like contagious. Like the way they're yes. smiling, the way they're dancing, the way they're moving, it's just like jovial and like, they're so in sync. It's like, wow, look at these two guys, like, you know, together just doing this. It's <laughs> Amazing. And it's amazing because I don't think their friendship was developed in a plot sense, like no. through dialogue or anything, right? It was just exactly. they rescued the kid and then yeah. like it's but, – but the chemistry shines, shines through so you don't need like yeah. an elaborate backstory as to why they became good mates. It's just like it seems yeah, their yeah. chemistry is so natural you can look past the fact that, you know, there wasn't ages of development on why these guys are best friends mm. even though that's like – the theme of this movie in a sense, right? Aside from the yeah, revolutionary no. part. So, yeah. Definitely, man. No, so I think we're both on the same page. It was a pretty cool scene. And I think this is probably my turning point, I think, in terms of when this movie, because it, while it's gone, while it's been crazy so far, I did have someone, someone, like at this point, in some of my notes, I was still writing stuff down, like, you know, oh, you know, why, you know, why is he doing this decision? And, you know, like what's happening here? Like, isn't that stupid? Like, what's this cop doing? I had all these notes, like, criticizing the movie for its plot and i think when this happened basically at this scene when raju's near death thing that you know he gets poisoned by the snake after finding out yeah. you know he's looking for this guy he discovers that the guy he's looking for is actually his best friend yeah. and all that but essentially that's a small plot point you know beam then saves him with you know yeah. beam is also a you know a, a just, just just a herbalist just in case you know you didn't know he can revive people <laughs> He's very talented. He's very talented. Exactly, very talented. But I want to talk about this as probably the point where everything just clicked for me. And that was mm. a palace invasion, man. Like, oh, yes. Man, when they plan to break through that truck and it just, with, oh my God. With the menage, just all the animals and he jumps out with them into wow. the British fortress. Oh my gosh. With yeah, fire yeah. in his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire in his hand. That scene is so insane. So I, I went back and checked. That's that's about an hour, 20 minutes in. 
So Jesus, we still have like an hour and a half of absolute craziness ahead of us. And if you think, if I would say so far, we were going at about an 80. Yeah. We rev up to about 120, I reckon, after this. Yeah. Because yeah. from here on in, this scene itself is ballistic. What did you think about this, man? Like, how did you think this was shot and everything? Like, it was, this was a, this was an epic scene, man. <laughs> this was, I'm trying to, I can't even rank these fight scenes because they are all yeah, so yeah, yeah. amazing in their own way. But this one with the animals running right yeah. over the British fortress, <laughs> like, you know, tearing into the necks of British soldiers. Yeah. Like yeah. it was just so brilliantly done in the firing, casing everyone. And is this the point where Raju realizes who Beam is as yes. well? Yeah, yeah, Comes yeah. Like the there's thing. that emotional. <laughs> Comes in with the yes. flaming chariots. Oh my god! <laughs> it is so odd. the start of these scenes could actually be iconic. I think in their own way, yeah. right? Like Beam jumping out of the truck with the animals, kind of yeah, going behind definitely. him. is It's pretty amazing. And then running over the roofs and like trying to find yeah, yeah. Uh, Mali or Malu. I forget her yeah, name. Mali, yeah. But yeah, just just so well done. Like it is another one where you're just kind of jaw dropping action sequence yeah, and you're yeah. just wondering what's going to happen next again so yeah amazing sequence man like did not see yeah, this coming they, and for it to happen in the way it did yeah man they didn't hold back either right like my god like they just uh, showed like a deer just run through some dude and get his horns into people they threw, they threw like tigers at people um surprisingly gory of, this film yeah yeah, man, they didn't hold back at all, which I appreciated. Like, you know, if it's going to be yep. this kind of raucous kind of movie, then, yep. you know, don't hold back. Don't don't give me something that's, you know, tame at this point after you've shown me everything. Like, yes. as we said, like, yes. because the movie sets up with such craziness, it has to just keep continuing along those kind of lines. And it Blade. definitely yes. does. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, this scene was, I don't know if this scene was, this scene might have been my favorite scene because it was just, yeah, okay. I think it's just like, it just changed the whole tone of the movie. And they do some things like, yeah. there's some pretty cool shots, I've got to say in this. Like you mentioned the one about, um, you know, Beam jumping out of the truck on the side and the animals up out with him. Pretty cool despite the CGI. But um, the other one, like I think when Raju comes in and I think the horses are released and the chariot like hits something and it just falls and it's just him, his face and the flames over him. And he's just oh, walking yes. like, it's not even, it's not even slow motion. It's like just, it's not, exaggeratedly slow it's just a little bit slow and there's just a silence and it's just like about to hit and then bang just you know that's it just like the tension yeah 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 it's oh man this scene was awesome and this got me like you know if i thought that this movie was going good i was like okay you know honestly i think it was like i was thinking of breaking this up into two parts because just how long this would be and i yeah. think it was like about 12 30 when the scene happened there was no way I'm sleeping after this. <laughs> <laughs> that is, so, it just had to keep going at this point. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, so yeah, that scene was insane. Um, my turning point. Story-wise, I think we're going along pretty okay. I'm getting more invested in the story as we continue because, you know, yep. there's this whole mystery between who is he, who is he, what's he going to do yep. now. It's obvious that Raju's not just a you know servant of the Empire. There must be something more to his story. Yes. You know, and that's when we yes. find this out. Now, it's a, I had a hard time when I thought about this movie again, I had a hard time breaking it down between like acts, like you do in movies, like first act, second act, third act. Yeah. So that's why I can't really call it that we're in the second act because this flashback just sort of takes us somewhere else. Yeah. And, Different time. Yeah. 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 Flashbacks can be dangerous, right? Because they can take you out of the movie. But, um, before I go into it, man, I want to get your point of view. Like, what did you think about this, how this played out? Not just the timing of it, but the actual whole flashback scene itself. I, I got some things to say. What did you think? I thought, like, it was surprising to me, firstly, how long the flashback was, because it, it takes yeah. quite a bit of time to flash, flesh out what is going on, and it's not immediately yeah. clear the context for it. And as you're saying, like one of the characters' main motivations, one of the two main characters' main motivations only comes in after halfway through the movie and yeah. kind of builds up from there. And so it surprised me how long it was. And But the story, I think, was so well done in terms yeah. of 
fleshing out the characters in this little amount in the time that they had. Yeah, man. right. It was like a mini movie within a larger yes. movie, right? And the context of Raju's father, his family, um, his kind of childhood sweetheart person, it was all done so well because I think it was hard to figure out how Raju was going to be like a redeemable character or how he could reach the heroic status that Beam was at because Beam was kind of like this godlike, like pure good guy, whereas you've seen Raju do some fairly despicable things and brutal things to his own people in service of the British government. So you knew there had to be a good story, but call it, could they pull it off in a meaningful way? And man, did they do it with yeah. the story of Raju's father and the resistance movement and explaining why Raju's going to the lengths that he's going. I thought it was really well done, man. And it kind of just pulled some emotional heartstrings as well with kind of what happened to his father, the kind of perseverance against the British's tactics and everything. Like mm. it was, it was brilliantly done. I thought. Yeah, no, I could give a lot of credit to Ajay Devgan who played that role of the father, yeah. you know, such a strong cameo, like basically in that, yes. that time, but yeah, it was such a good job that he did to just express. Yeah. I mean, you said short time, right? It was a really short capture. Um, it was like a mini movie. It was like a short movie, basically. To, that mm. itself could have been taken out and been broadcast as a short movie, I think. Yeah, yeah. But yeah man. It was pretty, yeah, the emotional part really came through in this, maybe even more than most of the other movies, to be honest. It you know, showed us 100%. like you know, his backstory and why he is the way he is and what his motivations were. It's pretty clever, man. I thought, you know, it wasn't like dialogue heavy. It wasn't like this movie has not been dragged down at all. The pacing continued even throughout this flashback because mm. the action, the great thing was the contrast in action in this, right? We've seen so much craziness so far, like chariots flying over people's head, like Raju throwing tigers into people, like, <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm um, throwing tigers yeah, into people. Yeah, yeah. I think Beam is like defying gravity at one point when he's jumping up and punching him. It's getting so ridiculous um, <laughs> at yeah. the level of what we're doing. But then we get a pretty grounded scene, I would say. Um, True. It's, you know, I think even like the, like the tone of everything shifts. It's like a more dull tone with everything. I think it's intentional because it's just sort of be like, we can do other things in this. Yeah. But the scene was equally as impressive, I felt. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't much CGI. No, at least no, no, no it's just CGI. like one man with a gun, yeah. like one yeah, man yeah. and a child with a gun take yeah, on, basically. you know, a mini British army. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. It was actually, you know, one of the parts which I was like, wow, okay, this is, you know, the first part was good, but the continuous, you know, after that scene with the, um, escape, no, with the, yeah, sorry, the palace invasion continuing on to the flashback. It's like, this is going to be starting to get actually some substance and getting really good at it. You know, getting we, like emotional depth to its characters. We're yeah. almost like we're, we would be almost two hours in, I think, at this point, or close to it, maybe an hour forty-five. And this movie hasn't let yeah. up. Like that's a movie in itself. And it's three like hours, right? It's, I, I keep thinking, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it's like yeah. I think it's like three hours or something like that. It's a long yeah. way. Yeah, but it hasn't let up. It's not. I never no. found it to drag. I never found it to be boring. Um, Hundred percent. And if anything, just, it just gets more and more interesting over time. Exactly. Like it just, the stakes become a bit more real in the second half of the yeah. film, I think, as you understand what each man is fighting for and you kind of see their friendship developing yeah. and then seeing how it will lead to the conclusion in terms of the revolution. Yeah, man. The um, emotional part in this is really strong. I think this is when they bring up the the sergeant, I uh, forget his name. I, th I think this is where, no, I think he was shown before this, but he's really prominent here. Um, played by Ray Stevenson. Now, I don't know too much about oh, him. Oh, the, the governor, Scott guy. Yeah, yeah, the, Scott. Yeah, the yeah. Wife, yeah. But he's got a familiar face, so he's actually been in quite a bit of Hollywood stuff, which is yeah. actually a huge deal for an Indian cinema to have somebody like, like that. Um, but yeah, like, you know, his whole thing about, you know, your life is worth a bullet or something. No, your worth is not life or, is not worth a bullet. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, God, brutal, man. I mean, how good are him and his wife at being just completely despicable yeah. without oh, having oh too much God. to do at all, right? Like, from the time they're on the screen, you're like, I hate these people. Like, they this, are right? monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're this. very, yeah, relentlessly evil and yeah. mean-spirited and every kind of is racist, yeah. whatever. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're all the worst of the British Empire. Yeah, man, they... 
Yeah, you bring up a good point. They, they played that really well because he was like, no, they didn't have one redeeming quality. <laughs> yeah, they were completely just, just one-dimensionally evil. Like. Yeah, just pure evil, like in its purest form. <laughs> but, um, but it makes no, the even more cathartic as a result. But yeah, we'll get it there. It does, it does. Um, sets up a bit of, bit of a theme with the whole, you know, load, aim, shoot. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, like, again, the performance from... I did that kind of, even even the kid man like you know to see like you know like he's just seeing his mum die his dad's been shot and him just saying those words which is you know focus oh my god I was like yes this is impressive amazing yes yeah. you know a movie like I'm um, so far I've, I've haven't even found a place where I can even fault this movie like it's been so um you know the acting's been good there's not been any let up the action's been good the storytelling's been great it knows what it is um but yeah. yeah, man. So I'm gonna bring up probably the one of probably probably the hardest scenes to watch. I'd say, but see, I keep saying like my one, the, one of my one of my favorite scenes because they just keep upping themselves. Like, what did you think Gets about? Deadly Moite. Yeah, so you know, we had a bit of a laugh in my notes. I called it the the, the torture song. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. I think you know what I'm oh, talking man. about. The it, this is a brood brutal scene where Beam is getting publicly lashed by or whipped by Raju no less just to add to that emotional stakes there yep, yep. Um, for what he's done in terms of breaking into the palace and causing chaos and it, it is hard to watch mm. and when the wife of the governor I forget her name like Catherine or something yep. hands him the like even more harsh belt or what whip with the metal spikes or something I, I struggled to keep my eyes open watching that because yeah. when he first slashes the post with it yeah. and you see it taking the wooden chunks out of it and you're thinking, man, if that touches Beam's body, that is going to do some incredible yeah. damage. But it is just amazingly done, I think, and again showcases the cruelty of the British by making the entire population watch that. Yeah, But really hard to watch scene and I think like it obviously cements for the crowd the need to revolt and all of that. But yeah. it's like a moment that maybe consolidates Raju's respect for Beam and the sincerity of his vision and mm. his goals. But, yeah, tough scene to watch, man. And he sings during it too, which is an amazing feat. Sings beautifully. So sings, beautifully. It sings beautifully enough to inspire people to revolt. Yeah. Like that is... While uh, Raju is trying to arm people, his people with guns, this guy's doing it with a song, which is it's quite quite amazing, I think. And again, like a really bold choice. The last thing I would have expected to happen at that, like I would have expected like a riot or something, but not for him to sing this quiet yeah. melodic song about you know revolt and like yeah, yeah his connection to the land. Yeah, beautifully done, hard to watch, and again. A completely unexpected turn from this film. Definitely, man. It was like the word I kept coming up with was it was quite poetic just to see that, you know. Yeah. yeah. That 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 sort of contrast in him singing while being it's it puts your mind in such a weird place because you're hearing this, you know, beautiful <laughs> melodious song. Um again, you know, very catchy in a different way. But you know, it's beautifully mm-hmm. sung and you're just seeing him, you know, struggle to just blood coming everywhere and the faces of the people who are just, you know, credit to those guys, man, those extras, like... <laughs> they looked very tortured. They, they were, you know, tortured, but it just... Oh, I thought that was beautiful. Like, I called it, like, almost like... It's almost like an orchestra, right? Like, it's just yeah. playing and playing and the build-up of, like, an opera. It's just yes. non-stop, and then it just hits that point where they just lose their shit and just... Because imagine a man, you see someone like that taking so many, you know, slings what are you doing standing around? Like you can't take a bit of pain for, you know, to give the, you know, to stand up for yourself and do that. This guy is doing all yeah. this. It's inspiring. And won't kneel. Yeah. It, it is and, inspiring. Like it, it's, you can totally imagine in reality, people being inspired to fight when they see something like that. Yeah. Like hundred percent. Yeah, man. It was, again, I, I probably said like probably one of my favorite scenes, but yeah, again, like probably back to back to back now. But that's just the way you this movie is. You also just love torture. Yeah. yeah, that's true as well. I have a bit of fetish. <laughs> 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 but, um, no, no. So that scene was 
incredible. Like, again, mm. the one thing, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the charisma these guys have, even to show, like, you know, when they're jovial, when they're happy, but also when they're doing this kind of stuff, you know, charisma mm. can be just as important here. And to see the pain on Raju's face while he's doing something unthinkable because of his dad's yeah. advice back yeah. then, and to have that change in a snap, it just, it made sense, right? The way they did it, it wasn't illogical because it's like, wow, he's just seen something traumatic like this. Why wouldn't mm. he change his focus? And that's right. And, but, and it's like their friendship that makes them radically change their original mission, right? And compromise everything that they've worked so hard to achieve. And they put it all on the line for this friendship. But you can see why they do it after scenes like this or when yeah. Beam rescues Raju from from the poisoning yeah, yeah. and all of that. Like, it, it all makes sense. They aren't yeah, just yeah. other plot devices. They have emotional weight to them and make sense in the context of the bigger picture. Definitely. But I did, I did write down somewhere before that, like, I'm now, I see this movie through the lens of basically Beam is Wolverine and... <laughs> Um, Raju is Captain America. That's how I basically saw it. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's because fair. I think the that, fact that makes he, sense. He basically heals. <laughs> like the, oh, the yeah, he heals immediately. <laughs> He's good to go. He's good to go. Just no, you know, no visible scars, nothing after being lacerated. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> Brutally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then I was like, all right, if I see these guys as superheroes <laughs> with super strength, this makes yeah. a lot more sense. This makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it didn't. It didn't. It, it didn't really matter. I was like, this is a borderline yeah. superhero movie. So <laughs> that's right. I, I just love how you can know those things and it doesn't matter. Like that's a sh- yeah. showcasing how good this film is. I think yeah. that you can know those things and be like, you know what? This is so great that it doesn't even matter. Yeah, yeah. No, obviously, it like, does it again with yeah. just like hundred percent commitment to its own vision, right? Like. It, <laughs> I Keeps think that's a, it just leans into its own like philosophy. Yeah. It's like the insanity of those scenes it leans into it such that you've got to take it seriously. Yeah, this is a lesson in filmmaking in regards to consistency, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't let up if it was like, okay, they yes. show the craziness at the start, but then it becomes like, oh, okay, they can't take, you know, a bullet to the chest or something like that later. Yeah. Um, then it becomes like, wait, so you could fight a tiger, but he couldn't take this. Like he could get tortured, but he couldn't take this like, like this is I've That's seen right. it happen in so many action movies before yes. where it's like you know well, how come all of a sudden you can't do this but they can this movie doesn't let up at all so you know no. there's commitment to the script there's commitment to the action scenes I think you know they're like if we let go now it's going to look silly in in hindsight so yeah. yeah they did all that and like you know basically winding down now to basically the end after the torture song I mean it's still insane because it still keeps going. Yeah. A bit of story plot devices, you know. I think Raju then gets captured by the British. Um, then Beam finds out about his plight. He's basically, you know, the struggles he had to sort of get every gun into the hand. That little, they had that small little flashback scene come back. I thought that was effective just to sort of, you know. Yes. Just, it keeps hitting hard, right? Like we saw everything. Yeah. But the end of that flashback where he kills his own father and blows him up. Ah, <laughs> brutal. Yeah, the man. Cause. yeah, and even yeah. Um, the interaction between Beam and Raju's wife, like, yeah, like, like completely a- random, of course, that they would meet yeah. up in a you know country yeah, yeah. of millions of people, uh, yeah, yeah. but like somehow done in a really beautiful way, right? Shows yeah. what a great person she is yeah. when she kind of rescues them from being discovered by the British, and then. She obviously fleshes out the story of Raju as well, and that's all done really authentically and beautifully as well. And the the actress playing the wife is that the hmm. Bollywood actress you were mentioning? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And she she was great, like embodied hmm. that kind of strong female character quite well, and wasn't just yeah. kind of like some kind of submissive character in any way. So I thought yeah, she was yeah. great in the things that she was present I, in, I and she, that was I, done really beautifully. I thought she was probably the only one that was a little bit weak. To be honest, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think just in some of her, some of her conviction, some of her delivery seemed a bit out of place compared to everybody else. Um, might have just been the role; like she didn't have much to work with. She was just there no, for like right. a flashback, you know, dialogue. That's it. Her minutes were limited. Not much development, right? So there's no development of her as a person. It's more in relation yeah. to Raju, right? Like exactly. she is just yeah, someone yeah. kind of supporting his cause, waiting for him, and yeah, yeah. like and believing I mean, him. She's a big name. She's a big star. Like she's a lead actress in Bollywood movies. 
Um, yeah, okay. So it's not like it's... She's not taken away from... Like, I can't take anything away from the actress. It's more just about yep. the role given to her. But yeah, it wasn't yep. too bad. Again, I can... Like this movie does, you don't need to criticize it too much because it just moves things at a pace that's so good that you just yep. leave it. But we'll just get on to the end, man, now. Like, the way this movie ends, <laughs> you know, my God. Just chaos, prison. fire, just blood. Oh. It's carnage. The prison break, man. Like, you know... <laughs> To communicate through the sound that's on the ground Genius. and Genius. find each other. Um, that's and that then, itself is crazy. And yeah, I have to say, man, that the fight scene with the two people with um, Raju on top of <laughs> the, on top of beam with the guns, amazing, amazing. amazing. That, I, I'm not seeing that might be new levels of insanity. Yeah, yeah, I'm not seeing. Of all the action movies I've seen, I've never seen anything like that. And I've seen a lot of action movies. It's just unique, man. And it was so ridiculous at times. Like, the guys, like, they're doing, like, you know, they're doing flips and stuff like that, and they're landing perfectly. Like, Beam has a dude on his shoulders, and he's just, like, landing. Raju was able to fire guns off while mid-air that hit perfectly. The level of ridiculous. It's so crazy. He's born to shoot that guy from a young age, Raju, but... It, it was insane, but again, another insanely creative like action sequence, right? Like it's just that's not how I would have thought that that scene would go. I thought they would just beat up a few people and blow it all up and run away, but no, it had to yeah. be Beam carrying Raju on his shoulder and running away. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was crazy. It was sheer craziness, but such a ride to watch. Like I, I was smiling. Yeah. I think while watching that sequence. <laughs> Oh, definitely, man. Me too. Like again, like you said, explosions. There, there is a lot. Like they could have gone the path and made this just you know a huge like Michael Bay spectacle where there's just explosions yep. everywhere. And there's parts of that, but it's more grounded. It's you know it's like level fighting, right? They're just on the ground fighting yeah, yeah, yeah. people, punching and kicking, and doing yep. all kinds of ridiculous things with that. But at least there's no like you know big explosive like cannons and stuff like that coming. Yeah. Or like huge explosives, like they use arrows at one point as, you know, a weapon to use. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, basically we have the vinyl showdown. I love how how committed the captain is to like not using bullets that... <laughs> you, <laughs> he, he, I think it's like at this scene or the other one when like he sends the special forces and he tells them like, don't waste any bullets. Like, <laughs> it's like if not now, then when? These guys are literally laying waste to your army. Yeah. They've literally killed hundreds of thousands of people now, and you're still like, don't use bullets. <laughs> so committed, so committed. Like, still yeah. believes the bullet is worth more than Indian life. Yeah, unbelievable, man. man. Oh. But yeah, man. So the final scene, just craziness. I think probably it had my the snapshot which remains with me is a scene when I think it's Beam and a bike is coming towards him. Ah, oh, classic. Lifts up a freaking bike. <laughs> <laughs> and throws it. What? I'm the talking, hell? This isn't like a pedal bike, a full blown like motorbike. He picks it up and he throws it. <laughs> I just lost the it. Thing man. He can do now. He's just a really strong man. <laughs> I, I, I I lost it, man. I was. Like, I could not believe I was seeing that when that happened. I was yeah. like, "Are you serious? This is actually amazing." Uh, no, I had to the stakes in the final battle. Yeah, man, I was cracking up because it was like, <laughs> this movie is getting to a state where it's, yeah, I think that was probably the most cartoonish that I've seen it. Yes, yeah. Because also the CGI looked a little bit off, but <sighs> I'm so emotionally invested at this point and so along the ride, it doesn't matter what they do. That's the thing they've done. They've created this thing where it's so enjoyable that I'm just waiting for things to, be, to get happen more and more because it's so enjoyable. Yeah. That's right. And you're kind of caught up in the adrenaline of those scenes yeah. and you don't kind <sighs> of focus too much on the individual like no. silliness or the ridiculousness of what's going on. Like Raju shooting like an arrow grenade or like a grenade yeah. on an arrow. <laughs> like, what are you doing? And then beam jumping out of the water with a spear. Like, I don't think you can gravitationally jump out no. of the water the way he does, <laughs> like vertically. Kind of. But you're just like, that is an awesome looking scene. Like, and maybe like, like the cinematicness of these scenes are like yeah. beautiful. Like individual images, yeah. right? Um, are just 
bell binding and you know you're going to remember the bicycle scene and yeah. you know you're going to remember the ridiculous breakout scene from the british yeah. um fortress and all of that so they just remain in your mind so again just a real pure cinematic experience this film yeah man this is like pure action like i haven't honestly i have to cast my mind back to so far back to remember a movie this visceral in its action it's like it's kind of like 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 John Wick kind of stuff. Like that was pretty yes. intense. Like I yes. go back to like you know like I go back to Face Off with this kind of stuff because it's like that movie yeah. starts off crazy, and I guess you know we basically covered the whole story now. Not much more to tell, you know. Yeah. Um, happy ending and all. I did want to talk to you a little yeah. bit about the um, before because I want to talk a little bit about the influences, of directors, and stuff like that. Yeah. Influences that I had thought of, and also what you yeah. thought of as well. But before that there was a bit of religious overtones in this movie. Oh, dude, 100%. Yeah. And as somebody that, you know, is the most religious person I know, <laughs> which means that, which probably means I don't know so many religious people. <laughs> but, know, um, <laughs> yeah, but there was, but there was a bit of this, right? Like with the whole um, Ram Sita story. Um, oh, 100%, yes. Like, how did that work? That is how, straight up from mine. How did that work, work for you, man? Like, did you feel they did it well? Because like... I... I'm. I haven't watched too much Indian cinema as I've mentioned before, yeah, so yeah. I don't know how common this kind of heroism type thing is and likening people to gods. But I found that a little bit like off-putting in a way. I don't know. I'm not particularly religious. I guess I, I know a little bit about it, but there's definitely yeah, the Ram Sita thing is huge, yeah. and there's even I think in the final sequence where Raju is dressed up like Ram, Rama, right? Yes, he's yes, got the bow and right. arrow and he's got the like hair in a particular way the long and hair. The, like, um, and the long and the pants as well. It's very like symbolic of Rama, I guess from the Ramayana mm. and even, um, beam whose name is very similar to Bhima. I'm not yep. sure if you like know of the Mahabharata and stuff, but he is yeah, basically yeah. like the most powerful of the five brothers who take on yep. the evil, uh, evil brothers. Right. Um, and he is the son of, the wind god, I think it is, and he right. just yeah got the power. Like he's meant to have the strength of like a thousand men, basically, which is a hundred percent what Beam is in this film. So I felt like there is definite religious connotations, and I don't know what to make of that exactly. Like, is that kind of sim- equating humans to religious figures common in mm. kind of Indian cinema? Because it would be pretty unusual for that to happen in western cinema like someone being yeah. equated to jesus unless it was done in a joking way or it was a biopic yeah. of jesus in some way but it would be kind of a bit of a no, no-go zone i think but it really leaned heavily into the religious connotations here um i do know that these two characters are based somewhat on real life yeah. people maybe so maybe they were religious and i don't know they're paying homage to that but i did find equating humans to religious figures interesting not sure exactly yeah. what to make of it but no like indian cinema in general does have a strong like influence especially of hinduism um, mm. and others like there's you know um you know like islam and stuff also is influencing the music sometimes yeah there's some beautiful ballads and stuff like that yeah. that's there as well so it is a big part of indian cinema which i think what this was for was because i guess they're in a challenging situation. They're in a challenging situation a little bit because you know this is, I guess, when people see this, they would compare it to Hollywood blockbuster. Mm. Like you know, I compared it to a few. Yep. So I think they don't want to necessarily. They want a part of you know that Indian culture to be somewhere in the movie. Mm. You know? And yeah, there is a whole revolution part, but I think this is a bit more tied to the heritage and the history. Um, mm. because religion is tied into history and tied into culture. Mm. Um, quite strongly in india it's yes. pretty strong there so i didn't mind it too much like i think there was even the jewelry and stuff like that wasn't it like sita gave some jewelry to hanuman or something to return there was yeah some parts like that and i thought he yes. was a super strong dude so he was meant to be hanuman as well oh yeah yeah i think they're like related yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah right. so hanuman and bima i think yeah yeah yeah. that's right yeah yeah so there's some parts of that i honestly didn't mind too much because it's such a challenge how do you how do you make religion cool basically you know <laughs> like like yeah, how do you yes. kind of make it cool and they did that in a pretty decent way which wasn't in your face too much i think if you don't know anything about this it's just yeah. like oh, okay cool he's dressed up like some cool like, imagery like, yeah. yeah yeah it's cool imagery um so i didn't mind that too much man 
But um, yeah, man, I think basically the we are basically at the end of the movie. And uh, what were your sort of general thoughts about this, man? It sounds like you're a pretty big fan. What was your overall take, man? Yeah, look, I think this is an amazing film. This is unlike a, yeah. unlike a film that I've seen in a very long time. Like, this is so refreshing. And once you get past how different it is to the usual kind of films you're watching, if you're a kind of more West, if you can see more Western films than um, Eastern films, I think you will, like, once you get rid of some expectations of what you expect an action film to be, this will just take you on an amazing ride. And those three hours move by so quickly because it just yeah. continues to up the ante at every kind of sequence. Um, it's amazingly done. I don't think you can experience something like this very often and I highly recommend people go out and check this movie out if it's still at their cinemas or at least on Netflix. It, it's, it's amazing yeah. and a unique experience. Oh yeah, I would have loved to see this in cinema, man. If I if yeah. if, if I knew about this, I would have oh, no doubt about it. Like it's definitely like we watched we recently reviewed Top Gun Maverick and we talked about how cool it was seeing that in cinema. Could definitely say the same thing about this. Some of those 100%. scenes would have been insane in cinema, I think. Um no, absolutely man, massive. Yeah. Basically on the same boat as you. I loved it so much. I think I've seen it a couple of times now. It's it's honestly, I couldn't hold back from watching it again because I enjoyed it so much. And it doesn't feel like it's a, it's not a heavy movie. It's, uh, you know, even though it's about sort of, and I want to get your take on this because you talked a little bit about the, you know, the, you know, the British empire and the whole, you know, Hinduism, oh, mm-hmm. sorry, the Hindus, you know, fighting back for that, the people of India fighting back for that. Did you feel that too much? I didn't feel that much, but what did you feel? No, I, I didn't think it was, it felt like, heavy in any way like as you're Mm. saying i think it was a useful kind of plot device to showcase this amazing sequence and fighting and action scenes but no it didn't weigh down the film with like this overwhelming sense of depression it evoked an emotion from you usually anger or something at how the british were treating people and then it would relieve that anger with like this cathartic action sequence (laughs) where the british kind of got what they were coming to them and it makes the ending like so satisfying as well when yeah, yeah. the British get what's coming. So no, I don't think your mind and sadness as you're mm. watching this film. I think yeah. it is exhilarating and enjoyable the entire time. Yeah, they they use it for I guess the emotion of anger, and I think you use yep. the word like adrenaline. So it gets to pop yep. that rather than sadness or like you know yes, even like you know the slow song ways you tortured. It's used more just it's not to put us into like a sad state. It's actually to make us angry to see. Yes. That's happening. Um, yes. There's no, you know, they don't go through the history. You know, we have a few scenes where I think Beam at the side is getting like kicked in the face and stuff like that by the British officers. Mm-hmm. But it's again, it's more to make you angry than sad. Um, yeah. It doesn't go into the plight of, you know, how these guys are struggling to, to make pay and stuff like that or like subject no. to the rule of the British. Um, even the no. kidnapping is such a, I feel like it's such a small part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it happens quickly. And again, it's just there to evoke your sense of anger. And yeah. Not only the fact it's done, but how sadistically it's done by, you know, yeah. the, the wife just being like, I want her in my parlor or something. And it happens that quickly, yeah. like almost as if it's nothing. So, so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Like, I, I think I had some notes, like, why are they so committed to this girl? Like, <laughs> like she's just singing for them and drawing, like, henna on them. It's it's a bit in, intense. But, um... <laughs> it's really blown yeah, away. Yeah. By yeah, yeah. No, man, the cinematography was awesome. The fight scenes were yeah. awesome. These actors, I... It's just, oh, so blown away. I think that could have made or break... That could have made or broken the movie, but just how... I'm just going to use the word again. Charismatic, they were. I was. Yeah. If one of them were on on screen, I was like, "This is great." If both of them were on screen, it's like, "This is insane." That's basically so good. how the movie went. Yeah, I man. agree. I think they they yeah. carried the film and gave it like the emotional energy that it needed to like really draw yeah. everyone in, and then did great action sequences and dancing and all that. As yeah. Well to yeah, man, the dancing was, everything was impactful. The dance scenes were impactful, the, you know. Yes. I hate to say it, the torture scene was impactful and, um, yeah. you know, the liberation part was, imp- it was just, yeah, as I said, just an intense ride, you know. I guess, did you, so I talked a little bit about it. For me, the only thing that's reminded me of from a Hollywood point of view was kind of like old school John Woo stuff, if you've seen that. Like, so I mentioned. I haven't seen much. 
Yeah, okay. So, like, Face Off, like, that was his big Hollywood one. But, like, right, right, like, okay. like, you know, he had Hard Target before that. A lot of his um, okay. Hong Kong cinema, like, um, yeah. got the one with Chow Yun Fat and Tony Long, uh, I think Bulletproof or something like that. But those movies are uh, the same okay. lines. It's just in your face, intense action, nonstop. Yes. Storyline yeah. is like, okay, okay. Like, Face Off is a ridiculous storyline, but it's yeah. so in your face and the characters are so great and so charismatic again it pays off but he doesn't he doesn't use any cgi he's he was against cgi actually so all this yeah, okay. effects. so this movie wow. is like combining john woo with like i don't know like a michael bay back when he used to do sort of half decent movies um, <laughs> with sort of the you know it's like style use right but this what, what sort of what what did this remind you of anything from back in the day i i i Definitely, at least from recent times, I can't think of anything as comparable to this. And yeah, in terms of action films from back in the day, I haven't seen too many of the ones you're talking about. And actually, I haven't seen Face Off. Don't judge me too hard, man. Um, oh, but okay. like, I oh, know, I know. Uh, but yeah, that's why I think I was blown away by this because yeah, at least yeah. in terms of recent cinema, there's nothing like this in terms of the sheer creativeness and willingness mm. to be 100% committed to the vision. I feel like most films now in terms of action films, they don't go as far as this film goes yeah. and the action sequences are quite formulaic. You know what you're going to get. There'll be mm. some punching, some fighting and you know that kind of stuff, but they yeah. don't have the level of inventiveness that this film has. So like, uh, th- this is completely unique from my perspective mm. and it'll be unlike what people are used to from an action film. What about like um like Mad Max Fury, Fury Road and stuff like that? You've seen those movies, right? Yeah, I've seen that. I, does that have kind of the insanity of this or just the sheer like mm. craziness in terms of action sequences? I it can't might, remember that movie uh, so well. I did love Mad Max Fury Road, so mm. it, it might well have had some kind of insanity like this, but I just thought yeah. as a whole, and I guess this yeah. film also has the benefit of almost like switching between genres, right? It has the dance and the funny yes. comedy side to it. It's got the deep, like meaningful part or the yep. drama part to it. And then it's got the insane action as well. And a bit of romance thrown in. So to be yeah. able to melt all of those into one film and do it cohesively yeah. again, I feel is like a pretty unique exercise and to have pulled it off is again, an yeah. amazing feat. Yeah, you're right. Like, I think when I think of action movies, like this was one dimensional in some ways, but it did have enough mm-hmm. elements of the others yeah. to keep me interested. I think yeah. it was just, if it was just full on just action, I would have been like, oh, yeah. right, it's a cool action flick and it has some cool scenes, but yeah. there's nothing to tie it together. And yeah, it's yeah, sort yeah. of not keeping my interest because they're fighting for what reason? At least they had some reason to do what they were doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, there was um, some, and even the romance uh, with like yeah. uh, Isabeam and Jen, Jennifer, like that Jenny was kind of sweetly, yeah, yeah, like that was sweetly done. Like they invested a bit of time in it. It had some funny yeah. moments in there and some cute moments. Like it, yeah. it, it was b- better than your ordinary action romance where just some, mm. you know, buff Definitely. dude meets an attractive girl and like yeah, yeah. they immediately fall in love. So I, I yeah, thought it had some decent elements to it that, yeah, it's just yeah. unique to get all of those that mix right. Definitely no. I thought she was great as well. I don't know anything about her, but you know, played a really sort of you know, in the again, each sort of role mattered in this movie. So hers as well. It was kind of a nice little romance they had. It was pretty genuine, I felt. Like he wasn't Yeah. You know, like he wasn't even though he's a macho guy, he's got a real soft side to him, which I keep showing yes. even through that sort of yes. side. He's innocent, whereas Raju's a bit more um, you know, well versed in things. Yeah, things like, like that. British society and how to like be yeah. around women and stuff. And it's like coaching him. And yeah, exactly like, right. It, yeah. It, it was pretty sweetly done. Yeah. 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 That's nice, man. Overall. Yeah. No complaints. I'm big fan of this movie. I think, I hope it's going to be something that we're going to see more of Indian cinema. Cause I would mm. love that. I think there are a few more cause they've just after this, you know, sort of like, you know, uh, like I don't want to say it's like this movie, at, like the show at all, but like squid game was, you know, huge for, the Korean cinema, this this, yeah. this could start to put some ripples into the world of you know Indian cinema because yeah this is quality wise you know there's nothing to complain about it's on par with anything else that I've seen. That's right, and you know I wonder if it if Hollywood will kind of take notice and mm. be like, hey, look at what these guys are doing. It's obviously working with Western audiences as well, right? Because yeah. it's kind of 
become popular in yeah. you know, America and around the world. So I wonder if yeah, Hollywood will look to it and be like, hey, you know, what are they doing so well here and yeah. what can we take from it? Yeah. Something fresh, right? Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. made waves um, beyond just Indian cinema. Hence, like, you know, we got to know about it. We're not, I do watch Indian cinema, but it's not so much. I watch a little bit. But the fact that we both knew about this movie outside of mm. that, it's just like, you know, it's it's doing something right. That's right, transcending. Yeah, yeah just it, yeah, man. It's so, I guess that's basically it. Did you have any final thoughts or or good? No, nothing for me. Oh, good man. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. That was a crazy accelerating ride. I feel like I've just gone on the ride again. So you know, <laughs> gotta uh, just calm down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, like always, man. Always a pleasure having you, Sonny, and great chatting. Thanks movies. for having me, man. We will chat again soon. See you guys. See you guys.